Hello AS Math, it's Mr. Knight here, and I'm live from class, so we're actually going to look at this Cambridge problem, figure out how to do it so it gives you some kind of example. For the COLA students at home, I know you're not in class, but the AS Math kids have a message for you. So nerds! Yes, in unison, <laughs> beautiful, okay? So we're going to go over this problem, uh, and let's start with part one. So finding the first three terms in descending powers of x in the expansion 4x minus k over x squared to the 6. Now, we only need the first three terms, but we're still going to utilize that same pattern that we've been working with, right? So again, I'll start out with n equals 6, right? We're using those coefficients. My first term is at 4x. And my second term is going to be that negative k over x squared, okay? Because how you could treat this problem you could treat it like this, where you could do plus the negative version of that. Okay, and that's kind of how we've been treating uh, negative uh, terms when we're expanding this stuff out. So let's just go ahead and let's get those coefficients going for the first three terms. So I would use my Pascal's triangle, make it a little bit easier, and we're going to the sixth power. So we're uh, one, this is uh, zero power, one, two, three, four, five, six right here. So I have 1, 6, and 15 for my first three terms. Let's write those out. Okay, and my first term is 4x. So I'm going to start off by doing 4x to the 6th power. And it's going to be descending, which means it's going to decrease by 1 every time. Cool beans. So then we're going to look at our second term. This guy is the opposite. It's going to ascend starting at the 0 power. And I'm going to write it in here uh, just because we want to keep consistency going with our pattern. I don't know, it might be helpful. You never know. Okay. So now, really, the only thing we got to do is just clean this stuff up. Let's cancel what we can cancel. All right, we are done. That was a lot. And then let's focus on the stuff on top, right? So this is going to be 4 to the 6th x to the 6, and then it's going to be, that's actually going to be it, right? Because we don't have anything on the bottom. This guy canceled out. So if we simplify that out a little bit more, we got 4 to the 6 is going to be, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, 4,096 x to the 6. Okay, let's look at this second term right here. For the second term, what we're going to do is uh, now we have something that's going to be on the bottom. So we're going to plop that x squared that's going to be on the bottom down here. And now let's focus on the top stuff. We got 6 times 4 to the 5th. It's going to be x to the 5th. And then we have a negative k right here. So what's going to happen, and now I'm going to ask you guys that are actually here, what's going to happen because I have a negative k right here? What's going to happen to my sign? It's going to be a minus, right? It has to be. Right, because we're multiplying by a negative. So now we can actually uh, do the top. We will save that kind of for the end. Let's move on to this next one. Uh, we got 15 times 4 to the 4th, x to the 4th. And this is going to be a negative k squared. So negative k squared is going to give me a positive k squared which means we're going to have a plus right here. This is all over x to the what power? What power is it over? It's going to be x to the fourth, right? This guy's got to go to the top and the bottom, and you're multiplying. Okay? Let's clean it up a little bit more. All right. I'm going to do 4 to the 5th. Could somebody out there do 4 to the 4th for me? So for this one, after multiplying the 6 and the 4 to the 5th, I got 6,144. And it's going to be x to the what power, guys? It's x to the 3rd, right? they got to subtract. And then we also have to plop down our k. That didn't go anywhere. All right? And so, what did you get for 4 to the 4th? Thank you, Emily. That's going to be times 15. 
and I get 3,840. And then what power is that going to be to? X to the what? It, well, it's X to the to the zero. So there's nothing there. Exactly. So these guys are actually gone, and we're left with K squared. And these are our first three terms in this progression. And thankfully, it was only three terms, not the whole thing, because uh, that was that was a lot of work. That was a lot of work just for that. All right. Part two, though, it's saying given that the value of the term in the expansion, which is independent of x, is 240, find possible values of k. Um, remember in bell work when I was asking you guys to find that x squared terms coefficient? Okay. This is uh, basically a way of saying find, uh, it's saying that the constant is 240, right? The constant value, the, the term with no x values in there, okay? So of these three terms, which one is that going to be? K squared, right? That doesn't have an x in it, so that is our guy right there. So apparently 3,840 k squared, apparently it's equal to 240. Oops. So now it says I want to find the possible values of k. So what we're going to do is just solve k like we normally would. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3,840. So I end up getting k squared equals 0 0.0625. And finally, we want to take the square root of both sides. What can I not forget if I take the square root? plus or minus, right? And this is possible values of k. So we're definitely going to get more than 1. And if I take the square root of that guy, I should get 0 0.25. Okay? And that's it. Okay? So a lot of these problems, the Cambridge problems, they boil down to writing out some terms and then solving for like a k value, a c value, or, or finding different uh, constants, okay? Um, they're not all going to look like this, of course. But again, if you use that pattern that we've been working with, so this guy up here, and you're comfortable with that, it's going to take you a long way, and uh, your partners and your groups will be able to assist you. Okay? This is Mr. Knight signing out. See you later.